Yes, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I will shortly give you an overview of how we see it from the Icelandic Met, uh, Meteorological Office, uh, the, uh, how we're dealing with the ash in the atmosphere, and how that is uh, really uh, what is, uh, making some effect on the aviation in the, in the Arctic area. Uh, first of all, the Icelandic Met Office is also a state volcano observatory, meaning that uh, we have to, the obligatory, uh, to really monitor and observe all our volcanoes and give uh, some information if there is something are changing in, in these uh, volcanoes, if there are some uh, uncertainty and we have to raise the flag and tell them if there is something going, going on. But the duty on, on whether they are going to fly or not to fly is, is in the hand of the uh, airlines, like uh, William was pointing out just uh, previously. Uh, that means, of course, that we have to deliver and we have to be able, uh, uh, make available all the data that is available for, from, from the Icelandic volcanoes. And that is something that we are continuously working on. We are working on open and free uh, data policy. And uh, so, so more or less all the data that we are providing should be open and free for everybody to use. And of course, it is very important that we, all the scientific world uh, make use of this uh, data that we are providing and help the airliners uh, to, to really uh, make their better decisions in, on the long term. Uh, but I am uh, the uh, managing director of the forecast and warning, and this uh, slides has been uh, presented, uh, made uh, in cooperation with my colleague Sara Basotti, who is the coordinator for volcanic hazards. She would uh, definitely like to be with her, you here today, but unfortunately she needs to go to Italy, where she is uh, oriented. But, uh, okay. The Volcanoes that we have in the Arctic is the Alaskan ones, we have uh, Russian volcanoes, we have Icelandic volcanoes, and we have one located within Norwegian and on Yanmaya. And that is more or less the only volcano that is located in the Arctic. But all the others are influencing, uh, influencing the Arctic area in, in some, some, some area. Uh, so, <clears throat> Uh, this is a more broader overview of the, where these uh, volcanoes are located. Uh, there are 30 uh, two act, uh, volcano systems in, in Iceland. Uh, there are several in, in Alaska and there are several in, in Russia as well. And then we have this one in, in, in Jan Main, which is uh, only the only one within the Arctic Circle. But all the other volcanoes, and especially the, these Icelandic ones, uh, we have the po potential to produce ash and travel into the Arctic areas, and then have some, some uh, uh, effects on, on the aviation in, in that, uh, that area. Okay, why? Why is this uh, ask coming from? We, first of all, we, we are, there are more than 30 active volcanoes in, in Iceland. Uh, two of them we are not monitoring quite well, and we have seen uh, not that they are in snifelessness, and uh, they have not been been active in the, in the past past years, and we are not monitoring them quite quite thoroughly, so we do not exactly know. But uh, these are two are, are not uh, active as as we see it. Uh, they are up frequent uh, on average on three of uh, three to four years uh, more or less. Uh, so meaning now that the last eruption that we had was in 2014, that it's most likely that we have one not later than the next year. <laughs> that is what that's what the scientists are telling me. Uh, but uh, these uh, Hekla, Katla, Parabungur, and Grimsvot, they are purely explosive, meaning that they are producing uh, ash into the atmosphere. Uh, of course, in some sense, they are also purely effusive, meaning that they are more or less just producing some, some lava, which they have a very limited effect on, on the aviation. Of course, the last one from, from, from Parabungur in, in Holurhain was purely effusive, and uh, of course uh, made some, some gases into the atmosphere, but uh, mainly just the lava in, in, uh, from, 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 from there. So what causes the, the explosivity? That is the presence of water. That is uh, clearly that one of the most uh, uh, difficult things that uh, if they, we have a water coming out from, from the eruptions, uh, linked with the eruptions, then we have this explosive factor, and that makes uh, this ash coming out from, 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 uh, from into the atmosphere. But also, in, like in, we have in Hekla, it's a high viscosity magma that is uh, really also uh, causing some, some, some ash in, into the atmosphere. 
And from, from, the, uh, from the Icelandic volcanoes, more or less, majority of them can in somehow produce ashes. So uh, they are very limited on, 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 uh, on the northern part, and the center part that are, are, are purely uh, the opposite, that is, is not going to make any, any uh, volcanic ash in, into atmosphere. If you look at uh, <coughs> uh, Grimsworth in 2011, then we had a total different wind directions than we had in the, the 2010 AFF at which was for the main, main uh, uh, wind direction was in northwest, meaning that, we, that uh, the ash traveled from, from, from to, to, uh, to the south into the Europe, and then uh, further up, like, uh, like Oscar was showing you previously, uh, into to the Arctic area. But, for example, uh, the, the eff uh, effect on, uh, from, from 2011, Grimswood, on the aviation was very much, very much limited, okay? Uh, first of all, it has lasted only for uh, four or five days, uh, but uh, the AF was 28 days, so that, of course, has an effect. But the total uh, ash that went into the atmosphere was about tenfold more than it was in, in uh, the AF at the So the uh, total ash in the atmosphere was much, much more than it was in, in any anyhow in, in, in uh, AF at the So that would definitely have affected the, the aviation in, 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 uh, in the Arctic at, at that time. So from our catalog, we have uh, issued a, a catalog of the Icelandic volcanoes. That was one of the projects that we uh, decided to go uh, to take up uh, uh, pre after the AF at the 2011. Uh, so, so now we can see that more or less all the, uh, 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 the majority of the, uh, at the, the ash is going up to the north, both from Grimsvot and from, from Hekla, and sometimes in, in, into the east as well. So that will affect the Arctic quite, quite clearly. And for example, we are simulating and making some, some run of the models on a daily basis from, from different scenarios for different uh, uh, volcanoes. Here is one from, from, from Katla. Uh, which is, uh, was, was made in, in 2016. So you can see that it's very likely that it is going to the east and then further up to the, to the north. That is the key, key factor here. Like I say, we have this uh, beautiful catalog, Icelandicvolcanos.is, and you can have a look and can see what we have there. Uh, that is a catalog information on, on, uh, on all Icelandic volcanoes, uh, includes uh, historical activity, current seismic seismicity, uh, possible hazards and, and uh, several other good, good information. And you quickly look, for example, if you have a look at the uh, Grimsvot, you can see that uh, we have some, some short descriptions uh, on, on the volcano uh, telling us what we, we might expecting and what, uh, what the information we have there. Uh, then further on, we have uh, several detailed uh, descriptions on uh, general of, of uh, several different, different things. Uh, but uh, probably the most interesting part of this is that we have a very much a uh, uh, lot of information that is uh, on a geographical based. For example, here we have the, the tephra flows, we have the lava flows, and here you have the basic information about, about this, uh, uh, for example, one of the, of the tephra flows. So, Polar 2014, and we, based on the previously on our, our average, we should expect some, some eruption uh, next year. Thank you. <laughs>